What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. In today's lesson, we're going to learn 15 idioms that might appear when taking your English exam at first CAE and CPE by Cambridge. I made a similar video on 15 phrase verbs. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And if you're not going to take an English exam, it doesn't matter. Stick around because we're going to learn 15 cool idioms. And now grab your vocabulary notebook, open your section for idioms, and let's get into it. So let's get started. The first idiom on my list today is to get the hen of something. It means to learn how to do something or use something. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, it took me a while to get the hang of driving. And one more example here, don't worry, you'll get the hang of how this new software works. Number two, to cast or to run your eye over something. It means to read or to look at something very quickly. I want to give you some synonyms for this idiom. You can also say to have or to take a quick look at something or to look over something or to look through something. And now to examples with this idiom. The first one, please, could you run your eye over this report? And one more example here, he cast his eye over my speech and made some corrections. Remember that to cast is irregular and it's to cast, cast, cast. And now let's move on to our third idiom, to see eye to eye or the opposite, to not see eye to eye. So to see eye to eye means to agree with someone and to have the same opinions and views. And the opposite, to not see eye to eye, means to disagree with someone. The first example, we don't see eye to eye and it's okay. And one more example, the twins see eye to eye on nearly everything. Number four, to wreck your brain, American, and British, your brains in plural. It means to think very hard or to make a great effort to remember something. The first example, I've been wrecking my brain trying to remember my PIN code. And one more example, I've been wrecking my brains, but I still don't know where I put my sunglasses. Number five, to get your act together. A super informal version, I don't think you'll need it for the exam, to get your shit together or just to get it together. The three versions mean to organize your life, to take positive action in order to improve it. The first simple sentence, I'm all over the place. I really need to get my act together. And one more, everything is falling apart. It's high time I got it together. Number six, to lose track of someone or something. This idiom means to fail to pay attention to someone or something and to no longer know what's happening. The first simple sentence, it's easy to lose track of what's going on in Ukraine. The second example, I lost track of his business ventures. And it's super common to use time with this idiom, to lose track of time. It means to be unaware of what time it is. Let's put it into a simple sentence. The book was so absorbing that I lost track of time. Number seven, something is not your cup of tea. We use this idiom to talk about something we don't like or aren't good at. Two examples about me. The first one, football is not my cup of tea. And one more, playing video games is not my cup of tea. I like this one very much because I love traveling and it's to travel, to go, or to get off the bitten, and then we have two options. You can say track or path. 
This idiom means to visit less touristic places and to get to know secret places, secret gems. Two examples, the first one, when it comes to traveling, I love going off the beaten track. And one more example, we've already seen the Eiffel Tower and the Moulin Rouge. Let's get off the beaten path tomorrow. Number nine, to pull someone's leg. It means to try to persuade someone to believe something that is not true as a joke. The first example, don't pull my leg. There is no way you ran into Taylor Swift. And one more example, it sounds rather implausible. Are you pulling my leg? Number 10, to put your foot in it. It's British or an American version to put your foot in your mouth. It means to say something by accident that embarrasses or upsets someone. The first example, I really put my foot in it when I asked her if she was pregnant. It turns out she just put on some weight. And one more example, I put my foot in my mouth by asking if she was my friend's mother when actually she was her sister. And guys, before we continue and learn five more idioms, just a super quick reminder. If you like English bits and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please make sure you do so. And don't forget to like today's lesson. Thank you very much. Let's continue. Five more. Number 11, to sleep on it. It means to delay making a decision on something until the following day. The first example, let me sleep on it and I'll give you an answer tomorrow. And one more example here, why don't you sleep on it and make a decision tomorrow? Number 12, to slip your mind. If something slips your mind, you forget it. So for example, a synonym for I forget it could be it slipped my mind. And one more example, sorry for the late reply, it just slipped my mind to answer your text. Number 13, to take its or to take a toll on someone or something. This idiom means to have a serious bad effect on someone or something or to cause damage, suffering or deaths. The first example, the coronavirus has taken a toll on elderly people. And one more example, chronic stress can take its toll on your health. Two more to go, number 14, to take something on board. It means to listen to and to accept a suggestion or idea. The first example, your suggestion will be taken on board. And one more example, the boss didn't take our comments and opinions on board, but at least we tried. And last but not least, to go blank. If you go blank or your mind goes blank, it means that you're suddenly unable to remember something or think of something. The first simple sentence, my mind always goes blank when I have to speak in public. And the last simple sentence for today, I went blank and couldn't string two words together. So guys, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's lesson and found it useful. And I really hope it will help you with your exam preparation, especially part four in the use of English exam. And of course, if you enjoyed today's lesson, please don't forget to like it, to subscribe to English Bits, and remember that you can catch me on Instagram where I teach English every day. Thank you for joining me today. Have a lovely Sunday and see you next Wednesday with a shirt and in a week as usual. Have a lovely Sunday. See you. Ciao for now.